Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are on chapter 3.2, part one. What we're going to look at today is the least squares regression line, also known as the LSRL, which is also known as the line of best fit. And we're going to be using the calculator a lot. Again, use the power of pause and rewind. During the lesson, I'm going to be pausing and putting data in. So I'm going to say I'm pausing and doing this. And you probably would should do the same. Pause and write stuff out and then continue. And we're also going to talk about residuals in this lesson. All right, a few things before we get started, though. Um, some details. Scatter plots require both variables to be quantitative. Please remember that. Scatter plots, it has to be quantitative data. Correlation requires both variables to be quantitative. Okay, like nothing can be categori categorical. It has to be quantitative. If the explanatory variable and response variable are switched, so if you accidentally switch the, the explanatory, which is supposed to be on the x-axis, and the response, which is supposed to be on the y-axis, um, the correlation actually remains the same, okay? The blue one, correlation does not describe curved relationships between variables, no matter how strong they are. Again, if it's curved, correlation does not describe it. Correlation is only for linear, okay, linear data. Like the mean and standard deviation, the correlation is not resistant. R, the correlation is strongly affected by a few outlying observations. Okay, the outlier can be affected or the, the correlation can be affected by outliers. Remember that, it's not resistant. Okay, the red one. Correlation is not a complete summary of two variable data. Remember that. Correlation is not a complete summary of the two variable data. Okay, remember, when interpreting a scatter plot, you need to talk about direction, form, like approximately linear. If it's, if it's curved, then it's not linear, okay, and then we can't use correlation. Form uh, and strength of the relationship. Because R is a standardized value, R does not change even when the type of measurement is changed, like inches to centimeters. Okay, so if you change, if you convert something, like if you convert the response from, from centimeters to inches or inches to centimeters, if you change that, it will not change the, uh, the R value. It will not change the correlation. Okay, I guess we call it robust in that way because it does not affect, that does not affect the correlation if you change the measurement. All right, all right, so I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I can. I make no promises. Here we go, folks. So we're going to start off with a problem that everybody should be familiar with, at least in some sort. Um, this actually is going to turn out to be perfectly linear. This isn't going to be a scatter plot because I, I like to start off with this one because it's very easy to see things and to be able to describe things and write about things. All right, so here we go. So this table is showing the given or the given price of a single pizza based on the number of toppings. All right, so you can read the table there. All right, so part A says plot the data on the graph. Label. All right, I'm going to pause myself, ladies and gentlemen, from the recording, and I'm going to, to put in the numbers on the graph. All right, so you may want to pause and do that too, or you can pause it after you see what I've done. So I'm going to pause and do that to save a little time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so what I did was I put the number of extra toppings on the x-axis, because that's the explanatory variable. The number of toppings explains how much it's going to cost. Now you'll notice down in, I, I skipped every other line to spread it out because I don't want to put it all down in this corner. I also skipped every other line for the dollar amount. Okay, so I went eight here and then this will be 850, nine, 950, 10. Okay, I didn't want it, it's too cramped to try to uh, put the 50 cents in there. And you can see I put a little zigzaggy line here. Remember that means that we skipped a bunch of numbers. 
All right, so that is how I set up my graph. Now, I'm gonna take a moment and I'm going to put this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and graph the dots on my um, graph and I'm gonna pause it while I do that. Be back in a moment. All right, so I have my dots in and I don't know if any of you caught uh, a few seconds ago, I forgot the 11 in there, so I redid my Y axis so I didn't skip the $11. All right, so here are my dots. Uh, one topping costs $9.50, two toppings cost $11, and so on, all right? And then remember, I can draw my line through that just like this. Okay, that's, that's going to be my least squares regression line, but I'm going to use the calculator to come up with an equation for that, all right? And we're going to use that to make some predictions later on. All right, so first of all, let's look at B. It says, describe the relationship. All right, well, as the number of toppings increase the price increases. Okay, pretty obvious, right? Okay, so we got to write a complete sentence or write a sentence describing the relationship. Remember, we're going to be describing a lot. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to take a moment right here and I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to emphasize something, ladies and gentlemen. Um, read the book. Read the examples in chapter 3-2. There's a lot of good examples that you need to look at. Okay, I can't go through all of these examples that are in the book, but you need to read through each example carefully and think about what they are talking about. All right, at a minimum, read the examples in your book. I can't emphasize that enough. All right, read the book. All right, enough of that. All right, so as the number of toppings increase, the price increases. All right, now the next part is find the equation for the least squares regression line. Draw the line on your graph. Well, I already did that. Write the equation below to find X and Y. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna take and pause a moment and then we are going to uh, look at what it looks like on the calculator. All right. All right, so what I have done, ladies and gentlemen, is I have typed the information into list one and list two on the calculator. All right, so the number of toppings in list one and the price in list number two, because explanatory in list one and response in list two. Now, before we go any further, let's make sure the diagnostic is turned on. So remember how to do that, go second zero. And we want to go to the diagnostic on. Scroll down to the diagnostic on and make sure it's turned on because that's going to give us all the information we need when we're doing this. All right, so mine is turned on. All right, so what we want to do next, what it says is find the equation of the least squares regression line. All right, so here we go. We're going to go stat. We're going to go to calculate. Remember, we do not new, use number four in this class. We use number eight. Just click the number eight. All right, my explanatory is in list one. My response is in list two. I'm going to go ahead and calculate. Now, if you end up with an error message, that means you type something in wrong. All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Here is my equation. Here's the eight that goes for A, and here's B, 1.5 and then remember that fourth one that's our correlation that should be a one because that's exactly linear okay you can't get any stronger than that because the number of toppings 100 100 percent explains the price of the pizza now this eight is eight dollars this 1.5 is a dollar fifty all right so let's define first of all First, x equals number of toppings. You must define your variables. You, can you cannot ignore that part. Okay, so x is the number of toppings. 
and y equals the cost or the price. All right, now when we write this, we're actually going to put a, a hat on that. Okay, again, there's lots of symbols we need to understand. And that y hat means this is a prediction. Granted, this is perfectly linear, but y hat means prediction. Write that down. Equals, okay, the $8 plus the $1.50. I'm going to put a zero on that, x. All right. So what is the correlation? Well, we already saw that. The correlation is 1. Why is that? Okay, because it's perfectly linear. Okay, the, the dots aren't a perfectly straight line. The correlation is 1. The toppings 100% explain the cost of the pizza. All right, now, interpreting. This is probably the part where people are, you're going to have to work on it. This is why I said you need to read those examples in the book also. And I'm going to have an extra example record of a recording problem uh, after the next part. You'll see that on Schoology. So interpret the rate of change. Well, the rate of change is our slope. So that's the $1.50, right? All right, so we're just going to say each, and you should write a sentence, each topping costs a dollar fifty more. All right, that's easy enough, right? Easy to interpret. The y intercept, okay, the y intercept is the eight dollars. Okay, what is that telling us? All right, well, if you look, okay, well, I didn't quite, I guess I should have gone, this line should have gone to right there. Okay, well, what does that mean? All right, well, that means that it will cost $8.00. For zero toppings. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, that's a cheese pizza, right? So a cheese pizza is going to cost you eight bucks. That's what that means. Now, use the least squares regression line, the LSRL, to find the cost of a pizza with eight and ten toppings. Okay, so again, this Y hat, that's for predicting equals eight plus a dollar fifty x okay so well we're going to know the exact answer so we're simply whoops forgot the x we're going to go ahead and plug in the eight so how much will an eight topping pizza cost okay you can do the math to save time i'm just going to go right to it it's going to cost you 20 bucks. Better be a pretty good pizza for 20 bucks, right? And then 8 plus $1.50 times the 10 toppings. That is a lot of toppings on a pizza. Better be a gourmet pizza. And that's going to cost you $27.50 if I did my math correctly. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me double check those, make sure I did my math right. I would be very embarrassed if I did that wrong. Okay, that one's right. Oh, I don't know where that 27, oh, 13 toppings. I said 10 toppings. Okay, yeah, I'm glad I double checked that. I changed it to 10 toppings. On my, on my paper, I have 13 toppings. So yeah, now that pizza is only going to cost $23. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I was looking at my paper, which has something different than what I have on here. All right, so $23 for a 10-topping pizza. Let's continue, please. All right, now what is a residual? It's the vertical distance from the least squares regression line to the data point. 
Again, the vertical distance. So let's say I have the line like this and I have a dot down here or a dot here. Okay, the residual is the vertical distance from the dot to that line of best fit, to the regression, the least squares regression line. All right, so it's the difference between an observed value. Okay, again, this is the observed. And the predicted, okay, so this spot would be the predicted. All right, anything on the line is your predicted value. So the residual equals the observed minus the predicted, the y hat. So what are the residuals for the pizza problem? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's think about this. Every single dot is on the line, right? So the predicted and the observed are exactly the same. So, ladies and gentlemen, the residuals are zero. Okay, because those dots are on the line. All right, let us continue. So, in this next problem, again, I'm going to pause, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to make my, put my numbers on my graph. And I'm also going to then put them in the calculator. So I'm going to pause and do all of that. You can pause the video now and po probably do that also. All right. I'll be back in a few seconds. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, just put in, we don't need to put in numbers because the scales will be too hard. We're just going to make a sketch of this. All right. So you don't need to put the numbers in. If you already did, sorry about that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I've got all of the numbers typed in. Now it's really important that you keep the, the partners the same, like the 18 needs to be with the 74, the 10 has to be with the 70. You can't mix and match. You, so type the, uh, hopefully you type the numbers in list one and list two exactly like you see them in that order. All right, now. To see the graph, remember, you're going to go second y equals, and you're going to make sure your plot is on. Okay, make sure it's the scatter plot. It's list one and list two. And then remember, it's zoom nine. All right, so that is what the scatter plot looks like. All right, the dots are going down. Now, what I have done, since I have my computer and technology, I have taken that picture and I've gone ahead and just put that right on top of mine. So you draw the dots as best you can freehand on your paper as you're taking these notes. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to continue. So I drew the scatter plot. Okay, and again, if you put numbers on it, good for you. But you didn't have to because the numbers, the sketch will be just fine for our purposes. So we're going to describe the relationship between the temperature outside and the boxes of hot cereal sold. All right, so hot cereal like oatmeal, things like that. So as the temperature, whoops, let me get my pen. So as the temperature increases... The hot cereal sales decrease. Well, think about it. The warmer it gets outside, okay, if it's warm outside, like in the summer, I really don't want to eat hot cereal. So as the temperature increases, the hot cereal sales decrease. You could go in reverse, folks. You could say as the temperature decreases, so going the other way, the hot cereal sales increase. Either one of them would be just fine. Okay, so you could write it that alternative way. Okay, but I don't have room to write that. Now, find the least squares regression line. Draw the line on your graph and write the equation below. All right, so the calculator is going to do all of that work for us. All right, so 
Remember, we go stat, we go to calculate, we pick number eight, and here we go. Boom. So A is, uh, we'll round it, A is 102, and B, we're going to round that to negative 1.9 for the moment, okay? But when we talk about it, we may round it again, but we're just, we're going to stick with negative 1.9. That's our slope, that's our rate of change. Look at our R value. Our R is negative 0.967. Uh, in the next lesson, I'm going to talk about R squared. We are going to understand what that is because it's a very important piece of information. It's called coefficient of determination. We'll get that to that in the next lesson. All right, so here we go. So let's go ahead and write this equation down. Remember to uh, define X and Y. Okay, so X is the temperature, right? the temperature outside, and Y represents the number of hot cereal sales. All right, so my Y hat, because we're going to be making predictions later, is going to equal, what was it, 102 plus and negative 1 point, I'm going to round that to 9 for the moment, X. Okay. All right, um, and then it says draw the line on your graph. Well, let's go take a look, folks. Go to your y equals, okay, y equals, type in your 102 plus or minus, if you want, negative 1.9, okay? If you use the minus sign, don't put a negative, x. Now, when I graph that, ladies and gentlemen, ooh, look at that. The line goes through the dots beautiful okay line of best fit it goes through those dots almost perfect we did do a little bit of rounding almost perfect now you'll notice there's probably about the same number of dots above and below okay there should be because it's supposed to be the line of best fit all right so i'm going to go ahead and just sketch that on my paper so i'm going to just go okay it kind of looks like that all right that looks pretty good cool all right, so what is the correlation again? Well, we looked at that on our calculator, and we see that the correlation is, let me go back, stat, I got to go through the stat calculator, I got to go through all of that again, sorry about that, folks, taking up time, I know. Um, negative, I'm going to round it, negative 0.97 negative 0.97 again remember the negative tells me the direction the dots are going down and 0.97 is very strong very strong okay why is it very strong okay because hot cereal sales and temperature are closely related i should say temperature Temperature and hot cereal sales are closely related. All right. Interpret the rate of change. Okay, so we know that the rate of change is negative 1.9, right? But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and say that that is like negative 2 now. Okay, negative two. So what does that mean? That means, ladies and gentlemen, that for, this is, this is the tricky part here. So for every one degree increase, you're going one degree, where'd you get that from? Okay, remember we're going up by degrees. So when we're using one unit, so and for every one degree increase in temperature, the hot cereal sales decrease 
by two boxes. That's the negative part. For every one degree increase in temp, remember, write a complete sentence. The hot cereal sales decrease by two boxes. Is this realistic? Yes. It is realistic. Okay? It is realistic. All right, let's keep going. Interpret the y-intercept. Okay, well, the y-intercept is the 102, right? So let's think about this. That would be, ladies and gentlemen, that would be when the temperature is zero degrees outside. Again, think about it. X is zero, that means zero degrees outside. So when the temp is zero degrees, they expect to sell 102 boxes of hot cereal. Is that realistic? Yeah, that's realistic. Okay, think about going to a grocery store. You know, Target, Cub Foods. Okay, that's pretty realistic that the store is going to sell 102 boxes of hot cereal when it's cold out. And zero degrees is cold. All right, use the least squares regression line to estimate the number of boxes sold when the temperature is 8 degrees and negative 5 degrees. All right, so y hat equals 102 plus negative 1.9 times 8 and... 102 plus negative 1.9 times negative 5. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to have to, I'm going to pause this a moment and figure out those two answers. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I've gone ahead and uh, also did H. So G, for, so 8 degrees. Uh, notice I rounded it. It's going to be about 87 boxes of cereal. That's what they predict. And negative 5 degrees, they predict 112 boxes. Letter H, what is the estimate do you get if the temperature is 80? Is this realistic? Well, when I plug 80 in there, ladies and gentlemen, I get a negative number, a negative 50. That is not realistic, folks. Okay, you can't sell negative boxes. Okay, they're not going to give you, they're not going to give away their boxes of hot cereal during the summer. They'll just sit on the shelf. Okay, so there is a point where it's not realistic, and there is a term for that, ladies and gentlemen. That is called extrapolation. The use of regression line for be prediction outside the range of values of the explanatory variable used to obtain the line. Such predictions are often not accurate. Okay, they are not accurate. Again, extrapolation, I guarantee you're going to see that word on a test. Okay. If you've watched the news, I've, I've seen that, that word used so much in the last year or two. Uh, it's incredible how much that word gets used. So get to know that word. Now, we're going to do a little bit more with residuals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about this, and then I'm going to plug the numbers in. So remember, the residual is the vertical distance from the least squares regression line to the data point. The difference between any observed value of the response variable and the value predicted by the regression line. Remember, the residual equals the observed y minus the predicted y. Okay, I'm going to fill in this table, and then I'm going to talk about it. All right, so I'm going to pause and fill this in. All right, folks, so let me go through this and explain what I did. So in this first table, I just copied uh, the data that I see up above. So the temperatures and the sold, okay, that's the observed data. Okay, then I kept the temperatures the same right here in this third column. Okay, now the predicted, I used my calculator. So what I did was, again, I have my y equals typed in. And what I did was I went to the table. So second table, and these are all the predicted values. So I went through the table and I filled it in. Okay, based on the number. I just went through this and found the temperature and then I rounded it to the number of boxes of cereal, because you can't sell part of a box of cereal, so I rounded them, okay? So that's what I did to fill in this blue part. 
So when I went to 18, I see that it's 68 boxes. That's my predicted value. That's the number on the line. All right, so that's what I did all the way down. Those are my predicted values. Then I found my residuals, okay? The residuals equal the observed minus the predicted. So I took the 74 minus the 68 and I got six. And then the next one, I took 70 minus 83 and I got negative 13. All right, so you might wanna take a moment and pause this and go ahead and fill that in and think through each of those, all right? Now, if I add these up, they should add up, okay? They should add up to zero, okay? But because of rounding, they won't. Remember the round off error? But let me show you really quick with the calculator that those residuals are, well, I haven't gotten there yet, so hold on, I'll get to that. So let's, let's go back to here. So residuals on the calculator. When you find the least squares regression on the calculator, the calculator found all the residuals for you. So it found them all. You just need to know where they are and how to find them. All right, so I'm gonna go through that explanation next. So when we do the stat calculate number eight, okay, when we do that, the calculator automatically figures out the residuals. Okay, it's got them figured out. You just need to know where to find them. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna go stat, we're gonna go edit. Okay, we're gonna go to list three. I'm gonna have the calculator put all of the residuals in list number three. Remember, you have the power of re rewind if you don't get this the first time. So go to the top of list three, all right? Then second stat, which is a list. Again, second stat and look through your list look ladies and gentlemen my number seven yours might not be number seven my number seven says resid i'm gonna pick it all i did was click on seven and then i'm gonna hit enter and ladies and gentlemen there are all of the residuals all right so go back rewind that and write those steps down so those are all of the residuals the calculator found them for you now if you remember the sum of all the residuals will always be zero, okay? So let's think about that. Remember that line is going through the dots, the line of best fit. So I'm gonna show you that those residuals, at least I hope they will, uh, they will add up to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tell the calculator to take the sum, don't worry about what buttons I'm pushing. I'm gonna tell it to take that list three and add them all up. Ooh, it didn't quite give me the zero I wanted, but if you think about it, that would be point, that would, that's a really small decimal, right? Point zero, 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 nope, two, seven. So basically it's zero, folks. For some reason, the calculator, it should just say zero, but it, sort of, it gave it to me in scientific notation. So again, what we did when we did when we did the stat calculate number eight it found the residuals then we went to the top of list three okay then we went second stat so again stat we went to the top of list three, and then we went second stat, and we found our found the resids. And then hit enter, and it should put them in list number three. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a little longer than I want. It's almost 35 minutes. Okay, and again, why, why should they add up to zero? because you have positives above, positive residuals above, you have negative residuals below, and they're gonna cancel each other out. If that line goes through the center of the dots, those residuals, positive residuals and negative residuals will cancel each other out. All right, that is it for this lesson. We will continue with more information in the next video. Good luck.